There is a better way a lot of websites can be handling state and it's one of the pain points as a user of the web when websites don't do this and that is use the search params to save the state so that I can send it or bookmark it and come back to it later on exactly what I left it on. Here I have an example website that's using use state. Obviously you could be using React Context or Redux or something else like this. But essentially what we have is a web page where we could buy a product. Now I can filter which color I want. So let's say I wanted blue and extra large. And let's say I wanted to send that to someone or bookmark it or email it to someone to say this is the one I want. When I refresh that page or when they go to that page or when they click on that link, it's gonna reset back to this. So I'm gonna have to tell them I want the blue one with extra large. Now there's an easier way to do this. If we go to product, we'll see the benefits of this. So I've got another route here and this is gonna be using those search params. So let's say I have blue and extra large again, click on that. And there you go, you can see in the URL here, we've got size of extra large and we've got image two. So it knows exactly which product we want. And when we refresh the page or we can go send this link or we can bookmark this, it's always gonna end up on what we left it on. And it's just a much better user experience and this can be used everywhere. Have you ever been on a website where you've navigated a few pages and once you've hit refresh or hit the back button, it takes you back to page one, it's really annoying. You could store the page and everything up here. It's just a really nice way to keep a consistent experience for the user so they can always go back to the page that they were on and expect the same thing when they go to that page because it's all in the search params so you know what they were on before. So to get started, what I've got here on the right is the application we had before, the one that's using state, however. And I've gone in and we're gonna go into the size component and we're gonna learn how we can update that to use our search params instead. So as you can see here, the image one is using search params. So if we reset this, it's gonna have those, but the sizes one down here is not using search params at the moment. So we need to change that. So I'm gonna show you how we do that. So the first thing to notice is we're on our product page here. At the moment, we're passing in a product. Obviously you'd be fetching this from a database or something, but it's got an array of sizes here. And this we're passing through to our size selector component. Now in our size selector component, we're simply gonna be reading those and mapping those into some buttons that we can click like we've got down here. And then we've also got the state that you could store, as I said before, in Redux or context here. So we've got the current size and set current size. And that's gonna to map to one of these. And obviously it's gonna be active if the current size is equal to one of the sizes in that array that we've had down here. So as I said, the problem with this is if we change this to extra, extra large and reset the page, it's just gonna go back to medium. So how can we begin to transfer this into using our search params? We're gonna need a couple of things first. First, we're gonna need the path name. So this is just gonna get the current path name of the page we're on. And this is for Next.js at the moment. So if we do use path name here, and that's an import from next navigation. And the other thing you're gonna want is search params. So we do const search params, and that's gonna to equal to use search params. Now these are read-only search params, which Next.js gives you, and it's essentially the search params object, except you can't go in and make changes. So I'll show you how we can do that in a minute. But essentially what we've got down here is that is active. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to change is that. We're gonna to wanna to change it to make sure that we've got the current size, but we're gonna to have to read it from the search params instead. So we come down here and do const search params or size search params, sorry. Const size search params. And that is gonna be equal to new URL search params. And then down here, we're gonna pass in the read only search params that we had before, but make sure that they're passed as a string like so. So what this line is doing is it's essentially taking the search params that we've pulled in, but they're read only, and it's creating us a new object that we'll be able to set some search params on. So the next thing we wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to set it based on which button they click. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do size search params dot set, and then here we're gonna change the size param that we want. So this is the search param we want, so we wanna change it so instead of after the question mark image or anything else, it's gonna be size. I'm gonna to wanna to change that to the name of the size that we're currently using, like so. So as I said, what this has done is it's set the search param on this new object that we've created for size to be the size of the button, which is coming from that array. So for each one, it will set the size to medium, small, large, for example. Now is active, we're just gonna to wanna to change this to use the read only search params that we had. And here we're gonna to wanna to do get, and again, we're gonna to wanna to pass in that we want to get the size, like so. So if it's active, as you can see down here, nothing's active because it doesn't have any URL search params at the moment. So how do we do this? Well, one of the first cool ways we can do this is we can change this button component out to a link. 
we change this out to a link, we're going to need to send it to a href instead of an onclip. So a really cool way we can do that is using a create URL function. So we come down here and we do const const size URL is equal to, and then what we're going to want to do is use a create URL helper that we've designed. Now this create URL helper is really simple. It's essentially a function that takes a path name and the URL search params that we pass it. And it essentially is going to take the URL search params and make sure they're turned into a string. And then the query string is just going to add them on the end. So it's essentially going to say if there's a, if there are any param strings or if there are any params, we need to add a question mark onto the end of the URL. Otherwise we don't need to add anything onto the URL there. And then it's just going to return you a string of that new URL. So it's going to be the path name that we pass through plus those search params that we need. So that's the way that we're going to navigate to it. So if I go back to that size selector, as I said, all we need to do is pass through our path name and then pass through our size search params. And there we go. That's all we need for that. And now in the link, we can simply change the href to equal the size URL, like so. And we can go ahead and make sure that we've imported the link here. And we save that. And now when we click around, you'll see that it's actually changing the search params up here. And if I refresh the page, it's going to keep whatever we were last on. So it's keeping the state up there in the URL instead. And that's just really cool. As I said, it has so many benefits to the user experience for doing that. Now there is another way that we could have sent them to this link. And that is if we change this back to a button, we could use the router as well. And another important thing to note is about scrolling. So I'll just go back and show you that. If you were halfway down the page and you clicked on one of these links, it may scroll you back to the top. If you're using the link component, you just wanna set scroll equal to false like so. And the other thing is the concept of replace. So essentially at the moment, if we hit the back button, it's gonna take them back to whatever size they just clicked on. You could change this to replace instead to get rid of that behavior so that it doesn't create loads of entries in that history for each individual thing. If you use replace, it's just gonna replace what they have in their history with whatever that search param is. So it's up to you how you wanna do that user experience there. I prefer to leave replace as false, which is the default. Now, the other way, as I said, that we could do it is we could use a button instead and use an onclick. So if I change this down here to a button like so, we can change this down here back to an onclick. And then in the onclick, we're going to use the router. So we need to use a router. And for that in Next.js, we're going to do const router equals use router. And now you're going to want to make sure you're importing this from next navigation, not next router, as this one's going to have some of the methods that we need. So down here, we can now do router dot push. And again, we're going to use that URL we defined earlier of size URL. But we're also going to want to pass through some options again of scroll being false to make sure it doesn't scroll them back to the top of the page, which is going to be a jarring user experience. And there we go. We've got the size selector now working as intended, and it's loading them in from the search params. Now, another really cool thing we can do in Next.js is actually read these on pages. Obviously, these are server side, but we can read these in on the server side component as well. So we come into product page and we pass a search params prop. All search params are passed through using this prop. And we're going to make sure we type this as well. So that's going to be search params. And then the type of search params is it's always going to be a key of string um, returning string. But since I know what they're going to be, I'm going to set it to image as a string and then also size as a string here. And search params is always going to be optional as well as it could be undefined. Now, when we come down here, what I can now do is instead, it, let's say in our title, for example, I have that image there. If I now change this to uh, search params dot image, and save that, you'll see that it's now gonna load in the whatever image it is or load in the search params for us. So if I change the image here, it's gonna cycle through them as it's now loading them in from the prop on that server side component. And we could have done the same thing with size down here. So that's a really cool way in Next.js that we can use search params. And as I said, these concepts translate over to any other framework you're using and how they do search params as it's just using that native URL search params prop. Now I wanna show you another really cool thing if you're using something else and specifically if it's sort of built on top of V, we can use Tanstack Router. Now this has just come out and it's offering a replacement for React Router. What it has is it has some really cool ways of handling search params, where instead of using that URL search params that I've just showed you, it actually passes these through to JSON, and then it can, this way you can use more complex structures, and it has methods for validating and adding type safety, which Next.js sort of misses out on. There are a couple of libraries that can help you, and I'll leave links to the description down below on them, 
Um, they'll help you with validating your search params and managing them a bit better so you don't have to keep writing a load of boilerplate for these. But as I said, if you're using something else, highly recommend looking into Tanstack Router. I'll leave a link to Theo's video on um, how he's done an overview on this. And I do hope to have a tutorial coming out soon on this as well. So do subscribe if you want to catch that. As always, thank you for watching. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Thanks.